I got really lost on the way to the casino. I was bored Friday and thinking about where to play PLO, so for some reason I impulsively booked a flight for Saturday to San Diego, because I saw a casino called Seven Mile was running a 510 PLO game with a 5k max buy-in. Good old Spirit Airlines, the 2-4 limit poker of airlines. I land at San Diego Airport, get an Uber, and go straight to Seven Mile Casino. There's 9 on the PLO list, but the guy at the front tells me that the game isn't going to run on the weekends, because no limit takes priority over PLO, and they only have 9 tables, so whoops. I call up Jamul and Ocean's Eleven, and it's the same story. I even call up Lake Elsinore, which is about an hour away and the home of another 4 card enthusiast, but they also say it only runs on certain weekdays. Uh, so we're kinda screwed. My buddy in San Diego picks me up and we hang out and he gives us a place to crash which is nice. I guess we'll just have to do a no limit holdem vlog. Nah, nobody actually wants to see two cards. We snap book a flight back to Vegas. Good old Frontier Airlines, the 2-4 limit poker of airlines. I'm a life fish, so I miss my flight and my buddy has to pick me up again. And we just go hang out at the beach because my flight gets rebooked for 5 hours later. Oh, and I think that could be my 12:20 flight, probably. San Diego's nice though. They got trees, water, Vegas people wouldn't really understand. There's lots of boats here too, but I see boats every day, it's nothing special. We run it twice so we catch our flight the second time around. When I land in Vegas I ask my friend Ryan to pick me up. He's Canadian so he can't say no. He doesn't want to be in the vlog though because he thinks 4 card poker is stupid, so not all Canadians are good people. I explained to Ryan that I need to be dropped off at the win right away because I've traveled for two days and over 600 miles to find a PLO game. But I don't think Canadians know what a mile is so he has trouble understanding the lengths I've gone to find this game. I live 20 minutes from the win so after two days and 600 miles I get to the casino and I jump into a 1 to 5 PLO game with a 1k max bind. I just want to make my flight tickets back. Let's just hop right into the action. And 179, we pick up 8877 double suited. This is my favorite type of hand. I think it's a great non aces candidate to 3 bet when deeper. Everyone folds to us, so we just open here to 15 and button and small line call. Flop is 10-6-3, two clubs. I flop what I like to call a fake inside wrap. A 9 gives us nut straight, and a 7 or 8 gives us what feels like the nuts given our blockers. We can also look for opportunities to bluff a 4 or 5 with pocket 7s in our hand. But given it's two clubs and all of our cards are red, I just check and it checks through. Turns a 7 of spades and small blind leads 50 into 60 with about 225 behind. We have two eights in our hand. We do okay if we're against nut straight itself, and he can find a fold with a 4-5 straight. He could also be semi-bluffing with some clubs, and he's not that deep. I think shoving it in against him is fine, so we pot to 210. He goes for a think, and he folds. Hand 191, under the gun straddles, and we look down at King-10-3-4 double suited. This is pretty loose, but being a double suited addict means I bump it up to 30 in the cutoff. Small blind and the under gun limper call, and we go 3 way to a flop. Flop is 9-4-4 with two hearts. With trips, a flush draw, and a somewhat static board, I go with a bet of 35 into 95 and only the small blind calls. Turns a 10 of club, giving us a boat. He checks and we don't really need to go big again here with our hand. So I go about half pot 85 into 165. 
This guy tanks for a little bit and says pot, which coincidentally is 420. I don't really have any particular reads on this guy. He's wearing a Callaway hat, which is a golf thing. Or maybe it's a call away hat, which is a poker thing. He could definitely have 9-9 nine -nine here, which would take this line, but with his turn full pot, I don't think people usually take that sizing with 9-9. Nine -nine. He's got about 400 behind him, and I could definitely also see him take this line with just a 4, since I took a pretty small sizing on the flop, and not a very big sizing on the turn. I'm the preflop raiser against the straddle, so having a 4 in my hand is pretty unlikely. So I think my hand is pretty underrepresented by my perceived range. So yeah, any 4 potting here makes a lot of sense, especially to protect against heart draws, which I also have in my hand. I rip in the rest after thinking, and we're really surprised to see him go into the tank here for $400 more. We gotta be good here, barring some random slow roll. So in our head, we're chanting for him to call away the rest of his chips. He eventually finds a fold, which I really don't think you should have a pot fold line here for over half your stack. I guess if he has something like 3, 3, 4, 5 and thinks we've already boated, he can find a fold here since he's just drawing dead. Since I have position on him this hand, the better line is probably to just flat his 420 raise. Whereas I think my shove is better if I'm out of position in this spot. Hand 195. Get into some more trouble with double suited garbage. I make it 10 in the cutoff with queen 752. Double suited and the button and the big blind both call. Flop is 345, two spades and a club. Blocking both ends of the straights. Having backdoor clubs and frontdoor spades, I'm perfectly fine betting this hand, so I bet 15. The button folds and big blind who is Callaway, check raises to 45. This check raise sizing is a bit suspicious, but we have a pretty straightforward call here. Turns out 9 of spades giving us a flush. We expect Callaway to check, but he full pots 125. We have a queen high flush. But this spot is really annoying. His flop sizing doesn't really feel like 6-7, but his turn sizing is telling us that he is nut flush, which is pretty believable given the flop sequence. He did pot fold the hand before against us, so I gave this hand one peel in position with the intent to probably fold to a river pot. River brings a 5 of hearts, which pairs the board, and Callaway quickly checks. We do have a 5 in our hand, but given our last hand history with Callaway, I don't feel confident in getting a fold by turning our hand into a bluff. Also, there's a chance that our queen eye flush is good against something like 6-7 with a naked ace of spades or an overplayed worst spades. So we check behind and he shows us ace 10 10 3 with nut spades. I don't really like his flop check raise given that I bet 3 way on the flop and he's out of position with no relevant straight blockers. But it is what it is. It almost feels like this guy might just be after us, but we don't really know for certain. Hand 205, we pick up an actual legitimate double suited hand. This hand is definitely 3 bettable, but I'm first to act so I open to 15 and it goes 5 ways. Flop is ace-jack-2 with two hearts and a spade, so we have no front or backdoor flush possibilities. Checks to me, I bet 50 into 75, and only the button calls. It's Callaway again. Turns a seven of hearts. We check here, and Callaway pots 175, and we have a pretty easy fold. We bet five-way on the flop, we have no hearts in our hand, we block a couple of Broadway straight draws, that kind of just leaves him with flushes. If he bets smaller, we have a chance to peel here and turn our hand into a bluff on any river paired boards. But since he went full pot and we're out of position, this is a really easy fold. I think really the only bluffing hand he could have here is something like King-Queen-10 with the naked King of Hearts. But there's just not enough of those combos to try to bluff catch. 
and 224 more double suited junk because of the four dangler but I'm on the button so it feels more justified when someone limps and I make it 20. It goes four away with the limper and the blinds. Flop is ace nine seven and we have a ten eye flush draw, backdoor club draw, and nut gutter. It checks me as it should on an ace high board. I theoretically have the most ace ace in my range and I throw out a bet of 40 into 80. Both the blinds call and the under the gun limper raises almost pot to 275. This is a really ugly spot. We're not drawing to any nuts except the gut shot straight here. With the blinds also calling, they're probably sharing some of my draws, which makes the situation even worse for me. I think under the gun's most likely holding is stuff like ace nine and maybe a set of sevens. In a vacuum, I feel like this spot is a fold, but I have a player read that the small blind is playing way too loose and peeling a lot of flops really wide. So I'm not worried about sharing outs with his range. The big blind is a pretty tight decent player here and he's the one I'm most nervous about having some sort of a nut flush draw. Big blind also probably perceives me as a pretty solid player. So he'll give me way more credit for my hand here than what I'm actually holding. So if I call here and big blind comes along, I really dislike my spot. But if I can get heads up with the under the gun player, I feel okay but not great about my situation. If I didn't have backdoor clubs, I'm definitely folding here, but we need flight ticket money and content, so we peel one off and pray that both blinds fold. Small blind quickly folds and big blind goes deep into the tank and ends up folding, so we go to the turn which brings a jack of hearts. Now under the gun checks and I glance at his stack and he has about 325 and the pot's 710. So his check is a little weird if he has a set, but I guess it kind of makes sense if he has just naked two pair with ace nine. I don't feel like I have fold equity here against two pairs, so I just check back and take my free river. River's a four of diamonds and he quickly checks again. And a 300-ish dollar stack should always shove into a pot of 710 when it hits a river flush. So we should just always be good here. I don't think he likes his hand very much at all with both straights and flushes hitting. So I just go for a maximum pain type bet here, which is actually not all in. I bet 175 into 710. And he looks slightly annoyed, but he folds. I think the maximum pain inducing bet here would probably be like $90. My philosophy is that if you can make your opponents cry, and constantly think with all your bet sizings, you're probably doing something right. Hand 231, our first non-double suited hand of the vlog. And it's definitely, again, in the garbage category. I'm as big of a fan of the button though as I am of double suited hands. So after a limper and a new player in the hijack sits down and makes it 20, we defend our button with 9775 single. Unfortunately, we get punished and the under the gun limper limp re raises to 85. But it's PLO, no one really folds once they put in money. So the hijack and I call and we go three way to a flop. Flop is king queen nine, two spades and a club, and they both check to me. And I just check back here as I have no business being in this hand right now. Turns a nine of clubs and undergun checks and hijack bets 125 into 260. I think he could have some 9x, some boats, some semi-bluff spades or club draws. And I peel here and we're a little surprised to see under the gun also come along. Rivers a 4 of clubs which completes the backdoor flush. And we're almost surely never good here 3 ways, especially when we have just trip 9s with a 7 kicker. We plan on folding to hijack if he bets again, but both players now check to us and we consider this an opportunity. I don't put under the gun on any boats and I'm very confident that hijack would just bet his boats here since the flush completed. I think about my line and I think it's very reasonable that I could have a boat myself. 
I would flat boats on the turn in position and I would check my flushes on the river but I would definitely bet my boats on the river. So if I do bet this river, I'm basically telling both players that I have a boat. The most important factor here though is will both players believe me? They both look like younger players. I don't recognize either of them to be regs. It's live poker so probably don't bluff. But on the other hand, I'm recording so bluff for content. I fire 450 into 630. Under the gun gives me a suspicious look and he folds and hijack starts tanking and tanking. While this is happening, I'm just frantically typing notes for the vlog. I look up at him as it's been a really long time and I see him sort of glaring at me. We make really awkward eye contact and I'm sweating here so I just go back to my notes. An eternity later, I've soiled my pants and Hijack finally folds. He tells me he folded a 9 and a low flush. He says the reason he folded was because I was sitting in his previous seat. I don't understand how that's relevant to anything at all, but we all have our own different strategies in poker. I almost lie to him and tell him that I had a boat, but this hand is definitely going to the vlog, so I just say, nice fold. So, hi Jack, if you're somehow watching this, don't hate me, and thanks for the plane tickets. We were in this game for just our starting 1000, and we cashed out 1857, which should cover about four San Diego last minute trips. We didn't play too many hands this session, we were a little tired from our trip, but I'm happy to see that I played a bit tighter this session than before. And here's some more graphs. I hope you guys like this. I'll be putting out some more 5510 PLO content as I officially just got approved by both Aria and Hustler Casino to film on their premise. So drop a like and subscribe if you guys want to see me bluff for more content.